All right, welcome here into the News for Jags teal gate. You can take a look inside the Jaguars Pro Shop. We're getting ready for the Vikings game. A lot of energy around the bank as they get ready for this one. It's going to be a fun game. It's going to be a great game. Now, obviously, you're seeing a mix of teal, purple, and fatigue. That is because we are recognizing our military today and our salute to the troops. It is going to be a truly great day full of honor, recognition, and a great game. Yeah, it's the salute to service game. The Jaguars are going to be recognizing a lot of military members out on the field throughout the game. But they're also going to be wearing some special helmets. You can see we got a couple of maybe mini ones over here on the table. The Jaguars are going to wear the white helmet for the very first time today out on the field. So we'll see if they can go 1-0 and in those helmets. Listen, I'm excited to see that because you know how I feel about fashion on game day. It times in with locker room traditions, game day eats, all the fun you have. But, hey, if we're feeling good in our new helmets and our fit, and that brings us a win, I'll say hit the runway every game day, baby. Let's we go. normally let Jana handle all the style and fashion stuff, and I'll handle most of the football. So, I, But we got to talk a little bit of football off the top because when you talk about the Jaguars, the one player most people go to is Trevor Lawrence. Well... Trevor Lawrence isn't going to be out on the field today. Trevor Lawrence dealing with a little bit of a shoulder injury. He's been limited in practice throughout the week there. He is out on the practice field. He was trying to see if he could get ready to go, uh, but it does not look like Trevor Lawrence is going to be playing today. That means that his backup quarterback has to see the field, Mac Jones. That's right. Mac Jones. That's right. See, look, I had it when it counted. I, I, I was, I was, I've been getting her ready for this the, the entire time. So Mac is from Jacksonville. He is a little bit of a different character than uh, than Trevor Lawrence, and his teammates have full confidence that Mac will be ready to lead the team today. And obviously, bringing a boy from Bulls back to his kind of hometown stadium has to be a special moment. What do you think Mac is thinking about to hit the field today? Look, I, I think Mac is probably feeling like this is the moment that he's been dreaming about for a long time. Take a look; there he is over on the field when he was in high school at Bulls. We had to dig through the crates to to get the this archives. stuff out. It, going through the archives to find it, but Mac Jones knows a thing or two about tossing touchdowns in Jacksonville. That's what got him from Bowles to Alabama. And look, it wasn't hard to find these highlights once we got back into the crates a little bit. Mac Jones was fantastic at Bowles. We'll see if maybe today he can be fantastic out there on the field with the Jaguars. His teammates in the locker room this week have been singing his praises and say that Mac will be ready to go and lead them out on the field. Now, we've talked about that years before, you know, and talking about how the fact that you've got to have a deep, confident bench to make sure that it gets you through the season, especially when we start to hit midweek. Yeah, it, it's tough. It's tough. Injuries happen. It's always that next man up mentality. When we talked to Travis Etienne this week, he said, look, what do they have to lose? Just let Matt go out there and be Matt. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, if Trevor can't go, we got a guy in Mac who's played a lot of football in this league, um, a guy who commands a huddle. And a guy we know that if Trevor can't go can really lead us to, um, you know, be able to do the, execute the same offense that Trevor did. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate the nature of this beast, um, seeing guys get hurt and have to push through that. Um, but, yes, if uh, Mac has to come in, we have the utmost confidence in him. Obviously, it's going to be different um, if that's the case. Uh, but we definitely have all the confidence um, in Mac if that does happen. Um, he prepares every week like he's a starter. Um, he does a lot of communicating um, with Trevor, for Trevor, with us sometimes. So um, just loved his energy since day one um, of him being here and his work ethic. So uh, definitely whenever he gets this opportunity, I think he's going to excel and, and it'll be fun. And, um, I feel like, like I said, Matt Jones is bringing a new sense of life right now. Uh, just with the way the season's been going, yeah. and then Trev's hurt, and uh, I feel like Matt Jones is going to just, I mean, we ain't got to lose, honestly, so it's like, go out there, slay the ball, be free, be yourself, show the world who Matt Jones is, and let the team rally and help you. You hear that? Look, Mac Jones has really earned the confidence of his teammates. It has been an interesting ride for Mac um, from Jacksonville here, a first-round draft pick, went to New England, didn't maybe have the best experience up there in New England, and now he's a Jaguar. And that, that's what he always dreamed of. We talked to Mac when he first got here, and he said, look, he was excited for the preseason game because he, was, he knew his family would be there sitting in the stands and be able to see him out there on the field. Now, that's always something that's so unique for a player. I know. I know when I play in front of my parents, there's a kind of a mixed sort of pressure, especially when you're going back to your hometown team to play. You ever had that experience in your game days? I know I have. It's just a different feeling when you hit a hometown field with people you grew up with and your parents in the same. Look, we're, we're normally some of the last folks to leave, and I remember after one of the preseason games, we were out on the field kind of wrapping up and doing some work, 
and there out comes Mac with his family taking pictures out on the field because th this moment isn't something that's missed on him. Uh, he's really excited and had an opportunity to represent his hometown, to represent the Jaguars. So I'm sure that emotion, maybe the first snap today may hit him for a second, but he'll also know that he has a job to do. All right, we still got plenty more of the teal gate coming up. We'll have uh, we'll check in with Alessandra. She tries to track down some Jaguars fans who are getting ready for this. That's coming our way right after this quick break. Welcome back here into the News for Jags. Tealgate, everybody's favorite mascot now in a children's book. I mean, this is a really <laughs> big deal. You know, I, I thought it was a big deal when he went to the Mascot Hall of Fame. And now he and his friend Alex Shepard are authors. Jacksonville taking to the pages of a children's book talking about Jackson's big jump. Right. It, look, it's a really cool thing. If you've gone to these Jaguars games, you know that one of the things you see toward the beginning is Jackson DeVille bungee jumping into the stadium. He knows how to make an entrance. 100%. And that's <laughs> always something I personally admired about him because, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I like to make flash when I walk into the room. And he always one-ups me, even at the Christmas Spectacular last night. Jacksonville comes in and everybody forgets about Jana. But we'll see you know if we what? can teach I'll him how to give you some pointers on how to make an entrance. Or maybe you read the book on, on, on how to learn a little bit on how he makes an entrance. This book teaches you about planning. We got a chance to catch up with Chad Johnson and Jackson DeVille, who, who was nearby and, and looked like he approved of, of what Chad had to say about his book. Because this is a really cool opportunity to start those kids young. You know, raise them right. Yeah, you know, Jackson, I've been talking about this for a long time. He put a lot of energy into this to, to tell the amazing story about how he gets ready to wow the fans during the game, all of his antics and stunts, jumping from the light tower, death-defying stunts. So he put a lot of time into being able to tell the story. But then to take this a step further and put it into our Jaguars Literacy Locker Room program, where we're going out to I'll schools probably. and different places here with the support of our yep. partners from JEA and New Moore's, uh, New Moore's Children's Health and really impacting a lot of youth throughout the community. Well, Jackson, you, you know, he, he talks a lot about planning. He talks a lot about the organization and the things he does. He talks about dreaming big but being safe. And so there's a lot of great lessons in there for the children, but a lot of great things that happen in the stadium that are fun that, that he brings to the fans every day are also a part of that book. Now they take it home at night after they watch the game, and it's, it's, a, it's energy during the stadium, and it's a good night book when they get home. Uh, and this is just a really cool book. It's illustrated by Devin Carvajal, who is a great guy, works for the Jaguars, and as told by Alex Shepard, who's, who was really close friends with Jackson DeVille. The two know each other very well. I think Jackson's very pleased with this. This is a really cool book. You start those kids young, Jaguars fans. They're, they're on sale in the Jaguars Pro Shop right now. I mean, my mom's a school teacher, and I told her I, I was going to have to send her one in Georgia to put in the school's library. I think that's great. And also, <laughs> I just think it shows, like, how much of a difference, like, a mascot can make. You know, they're often kind of on the sidelines with some of the other performance teams, but it just shows you how one person or one cat can totally make a difference in a community, and that's exactly what he does. You'll see him one wheel rolling around and bringing smiles to everyone's faces. He, he always knows how to turn some heads, whether it's with one wheel or jumping into the stadium or dancing down on the field. you got to love Jackson DeVille, and now you can have that for story time. We'll see if we can find some young Jags fans around here in a little bit, maybe have a little bit of story time later on here in the Teal Gate as we kind of continue on. Uh, we're going to start looking around for some more Jaguars fans. We also have some other really cool stories, maybe a Jaguars super fan that's going to come hang out with us a little bit later. Super fans and snacks and a lot more coming your way on the News for Jacks Tealgate Show. Stick with us right here at the bank. Welcome back here into the News for Jags Teal Gate. We have a lot of fans who are starting to pour into the bank. It's getting closer and closer to kickoff, so the energy's kind of getting there. Not a rainy day, but uh, maybe a little overcast. 
Don't you go jinxing it, Jamal. Uh, oh, Don't I'm you sorry. go jinxing it. If you do, you got to set up that tent by yourself. I, I'll set up the tent. We, we did the tent already. We did the tent. I'll take sunshine every time, uh, and it can get out, hot out here quickly. Hopefully the Jaguars are going to be able to heat things up. But uh, the fans are really starting to pour in. The problem is, uh, if I can get our camera guy Chris to kind of rotate toward the gates over there, the, the problem is I'm seeing way too much purple pouring in here. Uh, I can see the horns from over here. I don't know how those rank on the fashion uh, scale, Jana, but I can see the, the Viking horns and the pigtails. Uh, listen, um, as Heidi Klum would say, um, I mean, his name, because it's, it's, it's a no on the horns for me. You know I love a statement piece. However, I can't get on board with that because we are going to be purely Jags right here yeah. in this little square space. Now, I will say, you know, the last time we were here, I had to look out here, and there was a whole bunch of just cheese floating around on everyone's heads. So I don't, I don't know what the Jaguars fans are going to do. Maybe we need to up our game day headwear. Maybe we'll have, like, a Jags caddy or tiara combo. We'll work on that. But you know who would really have an opinion is somebody who is just a diehard Jags fan. Maybe he's got an opinion. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a diehard Jags fan come to hang out with us here in a second. We've got Alessandra Bombrion hanging out on the other side of the parking lot. She's tracked down some Jaguars fans who are really getting ready for a kickoff. Alessandra, are, are they excited? Are they ready to see Mac Jones? He's a... Jamal, you won't believe this. These Vikings fans are here from here in Jacksonville. What's going on? What happened? Well, the sun was going to represent Jefferson, and so I had to switch. Just for today. Just he's, for today. He's secretly rooting for the Jaguars, though. I, 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 yeah, I, he said he would take my pom-poms. Oh, <laughs> for the game. Wow, yeah. you're going to be looking very confused, so though. I'm going to be confused cheering for uh, Mac Jones, but wearing Randy Moss. Okay, so is Justin Jefferson your favorite player? Yes. Why? Just because. Well, what about Brian Thomas Jr.? <laughs> oh, my goodness. What's your name? Benjamin. Benjamin, do you, are you going to be like Justin Jefferson when you grow up? Yeah. Yes. Do the gritty, bud. Let's show him the gritty. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you think Justin Jefferson better watch out? I think you do it better than him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Speechless, period, period. Okay, girls, tell me, um, what is your favorite thing about being a Jaguars fan? Um, the mascot, probably. <laughs> yeah. What do you love about Jackson DeVille? Um, he always jumps off the something. Yeah, off the top of the stadium? Yeah. And then what about you? What's your favorite part? Um, getting to scream even though they're not very good. <laughs> well, do you think they're going to win today? Probably not, but maybe. <laughs> yeah, optimistic. We love that. And then what's your favorite part about being a Jaguars fan? The mascot, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you guys met Jackson DeVille? No. no. Maybe today will be your special day? Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> okay, so why did we all come out to this Jaguars game? To see the Vikings. The boy, somehow, he, he's Jacksonville has not done a good job growing their young fan base because of their performance and so he turned into a vikings fan and that has in turn made me buy a vikings jersey so wow how does that feel you turned your dad to the dark side i know good <laughs> i drag my kids to all the games oh and they i drag my kids this is my daughter and their friends to all the games so we can all be miserably happy together <laughs> You know what, but how special is this to have this mo memory or to have these memories with your daughter? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I didn't grow up in NFL City. I grew up a Packer fan. I've become a Jaguar fan since I've lived here for many years. But yeah, so they'll have fun memories. And one day they'll say, I was there when we were really bad. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, do you guys think that Mac Jones will turn the season around today? Yes, come on, yeah! Mac Jones! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> and by the way, here's Jana with that. Did you guys know that Jackson DeVille, he just created a book? By Alex Shepard. Okay, perfect. Well, guys, let's do one more Duval before we send it back to Jana and Jamal. We'll do it all together. Okay, three, two, one. Duval! <laughs> perfect. Thank you guys so much, and have a good game day. Jamal, Jana, I can't believe this. Oh, my God, that really hurts if you're a Jaguars fan. But, you know, whatever. Hopefully they pull out the win and can upset these Vikings fans. Back to you guys.
All right, yeah, that's fantastic. We really wanted to get them that, that book since they were such fans of uh, Jackson DeVille. Luckily, Jana has super speed. She was able to, to sprint over and then, of course, sprint back, uh, which I thought... It was looked so much closer. It, it looked a little close. Alessandra what? made you have to run because she kept saying Jana was going to be back over. I'm like, she knows Jana's standing next like, to her right now. You know, listen, she, she had a lot of faith, a lot more faith in my legs. Than I did. You got to trust the cardio. Yeah. You know, look, you, you, you want you want to get to cardio right because the Jaguars have a tendency to give you get, make the heart race a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. They like to they like to get my blood pumping, heart rate up, a little bit tense, but that's right because it's all worth it when we come away with a W, which is what we are doing today. I just ran for y'all. You need to win for me. <laughs> I don't run. Uh, I don't camp and I don't run. All right. There are a couple of rules when it comes to Jenna, apparently. Don't camp, don't run. Uh, Feed me. We'll see Three. if they can get a get a win today. The last time they got a win was against the Indianapolis Colts. In that same game, we saw a uh, special Jags fan uh, catch the eyes of some of, uh, some of the national folks over on television. He ended up on Good Morning Football. We got a chance to catch up with him. Alessandra chatted with him, and he's going to join us here in a second. But uh, here, here's the story of, of a Jaguar super fan and how you love a team that... that uh, has hurt you a time or two. Let's check it out. <laughs> Most people are casual fans of sports teams, but then you have a small group of people, the diehards, the passionate ones. Some may call them crazy. Others call them super fans. Now Jacksonville native Steven D'Angelo is part of the special group of Jaguar super fans after he went viral on social media for his reaction during the Colts home victory thanks to a Good Morning Football segment. This ain't much about anger. We know that. It's also about love. Look at this fan's reaction to what Tank thinks we just did. Oh, come here. I love you. Look at this guy. I want to make this guy famous. That is a fan of a winless team who just saw his team make a play. Did you consider yourself a super fan before you kind of blew up all over social media? Uh, a diehard fan, for sure. A very passionate fan. But super fan? Didn't think I had that title. Now, like it or not, D'Angelo is one of the notable Jaguars fans. The moment that brought so much joy to D'Angelo, Tank Bigsby's 65-yard touchdown run that put the Jaguars up 34-20 to over Indianapolis in the fourth quarter. Was that like one of the happiest moments that you've had recently? That was the happiest I've been since the playoff win against the Chargers. Um, I think it was 2022. Mm -hmm. that, that, was, that was the same, the same feeling I had. D'Angelo's been a fan since the franchise arrived in Jacksonville when he was five years old. Now at 33, he still remembers his first memory as a Jaguars fan. It was a night game going with my father. So my father got season tickets day one, and we parked 13 miles away. So walking for an hour and a half, and then getting to the corridor and walking and seeing the field and the lights and hearing the crowd roar and seeing the players run out of the field. So that moment is what hooked me. Do you still feel that moment today? Every time. But just like every sports fan learns eventually, it can't let the wins or losses affect you too much. I'm very, very passionate, but my mother taught me at a young age, you cannot let the Jaguars control your mood. Um, I was nine years old. The Jaguars had lost. I was doing the dishwasher and crying. And my mom said, Stephen, they're going to lose more games. You can't cry every single time. I don't take it personally. I don't let it truly affect my mood. I mean, it's... It hurts, but I still move forward. D'Angelo never ventured far from his roots. The Mandarin grad went to the University of Florida and then returned home once he graduated. Do you think that you would be like who you are today if it wasn't for the Jaguars? No, oh, absolutely not. It, um, it gives me something to truly, to truly care about, and it gives me something to talk with anybody. Sports brings people together. So um, it's it always fun when I am out and about or if I'm not in Jacksonville and people say, what team do you follow? It's like, oh, I'm a Jags fan. And they typically go, why? I go, well, I'm born and raised. So it's my team through and through. And one more thing. D'Angelo's ecstatic reaction wasn't the only thing brought up in the Good Morning Football clip. Who is this person? And um, yeah, who is, it? is she standing 10 feet off to the side of this interview cheering you on proudly? Uh, Jamie, you sound a lot like my mom. And that's a question that I've been pushing off for about four months now. Now, a few weeks later, we needed an update on his relationship status with Katie. I'll do it for you, and I'll do it for you guys. Okay. We're official. Oh, you're official. Making it official. I'm going to break it on TV for you guys. I'm also to Pompey on Channel 4, the local station.
And now we've got Steven hanging out with us here right. over at our teal gate. Thanks for coming in. I oh, appreciate you guys having me. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, it's look, fun. did you ever think that you'd go to a Jaguars game and next thing you know you're popping up all over TV? Not, not a chance. <laughs> I've been coming for many years and didn't expect the one happy moment to be to turn into this. This is truly wild. <laughs> well, and I mean, I think we can all just see that video and you see the pure joy you know, just like Alessandra pointed out, my favorite was that you just turn this beautiful blonde on your side and you're just going in. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. And, I mean, I love that we got the full tea in this package. Hey, I think you, that was a you, great You did interview. it for us. Yeah, I did it for or, you or guys. Maybe cover yourself. Cause, yeah, you know, like, the, the pressure, and we had a deal, you know, the second time on TV. I got to break the news. So there we go. Right. So you, you did it on television. She's over here watching and smiling. So yeah, it, she's smiling. give us a wave. There we go. Hi, Katie. Yeah. Hi, Katie. <laughs> it's easy. To, it's easy to smile when you have that next year. It, it, so. it definitely is because the Jaguars can definitely mess with your heartstrings just a little bit at times. Uh, been a little bit of a rough year, but you, we caught you during one of the the highs of the season yes, at this point. Absolutely. Yeah. I was hoping to turn the season around with that smile. You know, it, it could happen today. It, it could. It happen could happen today. today. It That's could right. happen. It today. Will happen today. We're going to change that language. It will happen today. That's right. We're going to turn around with those positive affirmations. Positive. Now I have to ask. Obviously, this was a viral moment. How did you first hear about it? Uh. My little brother and my stepbrother and my brother-in-law, they're all texting me. I'm at work. They're like, hey, you're on TV. And I'm like, no, I'm at the office. Like, I <laughs> not, not always the thing you want to hear. Yeah, yeah, no, you're no, like, like, wait, 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 wait. I'm on TV so, uh, so, yeah, I had to go home, and then I saw the clip, and I thought nothing was going to happen of it. And then Wednesday it happens again. So I had to go to my boss. I was like, hey, I, I got to get on Twitter now. I got to <laughs> I gotta, they, they want to know who I am. Hey, Give the people what they want. I yeah. love that. So hey, social and, and media works quickly. So right. when it's time to track somebody down, look. You, you all found me quick. It, it, we'll find you quickly. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure where you were going when you said I had to go talk to my boss. I was like, <laughs> were, were you supposed to be working that day? You know, it's kind of like mm. the Swifties when everyone, uh, you know, yeah. called in sick and they're doing interviews with bags over their heads because they're like, my boss can't know I'm like, here. I wasn't actually at the game we, on Sunday. No, we, I was... we have an agreement. I work from home on Mondays because of Jaguar games. Fair enough. That See, is that's fair. A good it, takes, it takes a lot out of it. Excuse me. It if, H, if HR is watching, um, can we can we take up this policy? I like that policy. That's a good does. policy. That should be universal. <laughs> work from home Mondays. Work Makes from sense. home Mondays after Jags home games? Absolutely. I like it. I like it. Okay. <laughs> How are you feeling about the Jaguars today? Mac Jones going to get the start. The Mac Jones and Jacksonville The Mac attack. Guys? The Mac attack. Little, little balls go. Yeah, little Jacksonville. I think we have, and I hate the saying, we have nothing to lose. We're going to come out playing with some fire. There's going to be yeah. some energy that we don't typically have. Yeah. I think as long as the defense can, can we got Dewey's coming back too. Yeah. We got some starters coming back. I know we're, we're dealing with injuries, but right. I think the defense is going to lead the way, get a few turnovers here and there, lead to some short fields, some scores. I think it's going to be a lot closer than people are expecting. As a hometown boy, I gotta put us, gotta put us winning it 31-30. I like it. I like, I like the way he I like, I like it. Hey, big fan, big dreams. I like. I'm gonna go with him. Fingers now, crossed. obviously, you know me. I gotta ask the fashion question. We got okay. a white jersey on today. How are you feeling about the shell white helmet? That's why this is on. Uh, I wish we could wear white on white on white. See, but, uh, those this, are clean. This is the you know, salute to service set. helmet, and I like this oh. one better. This doesn't this look clean with like the Jaguar cut out? I, uh, you sold me. No, uh, I like that one better now. This is the one. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this should have been what they were wearing on the yeah. field. Oh, not, that, nice. not that I'm the style guy, but I like that yeah. one. <laughs> I like that one. I mean, and the and the, the white face mask to go along with yeah, it too. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what sells it. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have to agree with you. I know we're gonna talk fashion and fun and helmets in a little bit, <laughs> but you know, I, it was just one of those things where everyone everyone gets into game day with their gear, and so I always had to ask, hey, now the super fan. How's your style on game day? Got to know about it. Hey, look, he's styling and profiling. He's got the Tony got, Baselli, got the, the only throwback. pro football yeah. Hall of Famer in Jaguars history. Look, you can't go wrong with a Tony. Yeah, yeah. and can we check out his hat? Oh, and it's autographed. Come hat. on now. Love it. So, yeah, let's see the autograph on the back. There we go. Give us a twirl. The runway. Insa, insa, there insa, it is. Insa, insa, insa. <laughs> Love it. Yes. Work, 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 work. Supermodel work. Come on, girl. That's all I can sing, you know, licensing. Uh, that, that, can't that's afford all that. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, Jaguars win. Well, hopefully Mac Jones has a big day. Can we we'll maybe see you pop up with another big moment? I'll be out there smiling the whole time. Out there smiling the whole time. We're going to pop up with anything sparkly, or is it too soon for that? Maybe, look, way to add more pressure, <laughs> Jana. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> I got your back. I appreciate you. They're not going to bring me out for the next one, are they? <laughs> no, Jeez, Jana. I'm, I'm a girl's girl. I'm looking after my girl. Oh, well, we see that. At <laughs> least this big. At least <laughs> 
There you go. There you go. All right. Well, we'll, we'll see if we can get Janet to, to back off the gas pedal for a minute during this commercial break. Coming back, we still got plenty more of the Teal Gate. We'll chat it up with some more uh, Jaguars fans. And you know who's in the building, who's in Jacksonville today for the game? Shad Khan. Take a look at the yacht hanging out over on the river. Shad Khan likes to roll in style. So do we. I could fit on the front of that yacht. <laughs> How's your girl? All right, big game today. There it is. Jaguars taking on the Vikings. It's all set out. That is a beautiful setup the Jaguars have out, but it's the wrong helmet today. That's right. We are going to take our shot now, and let's show you what we've got hanging out here on the runway. Okay, we are talking shell white helmets. Now, Jamal and I have been taking a poll this morning. Which helmet we like better? We are both on the same page when it comes to what white was our favorite. Right, Jamal? Look, I, I love the salute to service white helmet. I mean, the shell white helmet they have on the field is sharp. It is sharp, but this one with the whited out Jaguar and the stripe and just the little camo accent, uh, this one does it for me. I'm not going to say I'm, I'm the style guy or the fashion guy, but but it's the little pieces there. Listen, I, it's the salute no, to I would service say game. It would be perfect. Exactly, exactly. I love this. Like you said, salute to service. We have seen all sorts of military personnel, men, women, and people here who are local to our community serving actively and also retired military. And this is a great day to honor them on this game day right before Veterans Day. Yeah, and the Jaguars are going to do it wearing these clean white helmets. This is the first time the Jaguars have worn them out on the field. I know a lot of people are excited about them. Fans are excited about them and waiting for this for years, but the Jaguars players are also excited about it. I talked to a lot of them in the locker room, and they were excited about the throwbacks, but I, I dare to say they might be more excited to wear these white helmets today. I like them. I think they're dope. I wish we can wear all white with it, but the white, black, white, white is, is a great combination, uh, something that the team, you know, thought about together, um, you know, something new, very special. Hopefully it gives us, brings us, brings us positive luck. Uh, yeah, it's cool. It's nice, nice change up, a uh, little pop of color. Should be, should be cool to, to rock them out there in, in front of our fans. I love them. Now we got to get a win in them. <laughs> oh, they're tough, man. I like them. They're cold. So, um... I ain't get to wear the throwbacks, but I get to wear this one, and then you get to wear the throwbacks again, I heard, so that's good news. I love them, yeah, they're fire. Uh, I think they make my head look a little bit bigger than it normally does in the black, but um, I've had a big head, big helmet my whole life, so I think it'll get shown a little bit more this week, so, but I love them though, it's fire. It's, a, it's just a nice change up. Normally they have the black helmets, but wearing the white helmets, it's a different look. We like it. Yeah, I like it. I mean, listen, I think we can all think back, no matter if you played Little League, you know, mini golf, whatever you played, getting a new uniform piece was always exciting. Can we agree on that? Look good, play good. Those are the rules. I don't know who made them, but you just live by them. 100%. Now I'm going <laughs> to add one to that. Look good, feel gate, tailgate, fire. Okay, so those are the looks that we wanted to focus on. Last week we talked about some pretty pretty dramatic, you know, game day pieces. But what I wanted to do is actually take it back to the basics for this one. So listen, if you're coming in, you're visiting, maybe you don't have, you know, a loud animal print like me. You're not necessarily Fran fine coated, but you want something a little more simple. You can still rock at game day. We're going to go to my dry and see how it's done. Check it out. Are you ready to roar on the River City runway? Me too. So we teamed up with My Dry Blowout Bar and Goldie Boutique to bring you three brand new plays for game day looks that share style and spirit. From bold colors to comfortable layers, these outfits keep you looking great on and off the field. So let's get ready to kick off some winning wardrobe moments on the local level. All right, that was a little fashion halftime for you. And now we are back with three more looks to get ready for game day. So Kelly, what are we kicking off with? Because I know we wanted to level up these looks with accessories. Yes, we're kicking off with a leopard bodysuit and right. black denim. We added the studded sandals in the tan color. And then we do have these Jaguar clear bags, game day approved. That's a great way to go into the stadium, make sure you have everything you need. We were just talking, the clear bag game has come a long way and y'all have some great options for this. Yes, and you'll see some more in a bit. We can't go to the game without our teal. We made these Jaguar hats and add some flair with the bracelet. I love that. A little bit of game day, a little bit of glam, a little bit of glitter goes a long way. 
All right, next up we have Miss Lindsay coming back to the River City Runway. Now, obviously my tall girl girly, we actually have a dress that we can wear, we love it. Yes, and we're loving this dress. You can wear to the games, you can wear on the weekend. Um, great style, we added a black bag. Um, and she's wearing her cute cowboy boots. Game day approved, and like you said earlier, things that we can always mix and match for the weekend. Now, if you were gonna pick some flair, what do you like from the bling bar over here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say definitely some of these, add some teal in. Now this next look that we are going to bring you, we're gonna start totally plain and see how Kelly can amp up that look, especially for this weekend. Okay, so let's bring out our last model. Marianne's wearing a black romper. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add this fun leopard clear bag. We're gonna give her some bling bling with the leopard. These are my favorite, I love these. I've got some on also, some teal to add some teal and then we, we wanted to her to have a little bit of more sparkle, so we're adding the Duval hat. Give her some, some more teal. I love and that. And she's ready to go. And you can wear this on the weekends. So many great game day options. Now, I did want to just talk about some of your tees really quickly yes. because this is a great addition to a game day look, and these have been flying for you. Yes, this is definitely our number one seller. Um, we paired it with these teal, checkered short, but yes, we have these in four colors. So I have gray, I have black, white, cream, um, and then a mineral wash, but yeah, we can't keep these in stock. Score major fashion points this season with local looks from My Dry and Goldie Boutique. Swing by on your way to the bank for a total touchdown. Okay, now obviously, as you got to see there, lots of different ways to create a great game day look from a couple of basics. But one thing I have to share with everybody is leopard print, and I think this speaks to the Jags, as we call Jaguar print, hit its second highest shopping search last month since 2012. Okay. So I feel like somehow that's got to translate to luck for us. It, it's got to be a thing, right? Uh, look, if, if it's in style and it's Jaguar, Jaguar print, yep, that's Jaguar what we're going print. with. We're converting, then not that, leopard, we're Jaguar. It's, it's stars aligning. Yeah. Everything's coming into a row like it should. It's all coming up Jags it's a, on the th road. This was all a part of the script for this season. Uh, don't worry, there's still plenty of time left. Maybe this is where the, this is where the run begins. Yeah, exactly, 100%. Now also, we have our amazing pro shop that's right here behind us. Yep. One thing, PSA, every single time we're out here, I do see someone with a fabulous bag at the front get turned back around to go to their car, and sometimes we know where the parking is. It's a hike, so don't forget that clear bag. So your accessories, add some bling, but make sure the bag is clear. Yeah, the pro shop's got some really cool stuff. So we're like literally right by the Jaguars team pro shop, and I was watching earlier as someone went into the pro shop, bought a, a new jersey or shirt, and then came outside, took their shirt off to put the new one on, so that way they could be game day ready. You know, look, you, you get something, that. you're too excited to wait. Just pop the tags off and let's go. Yeah, now obviously these are also available at the pro shop, so I know a lot of people have come up and asked where we got these. They're the pro shop right around the corner so they do a great job in there todd shout out to you thanks for letting me borrow these for the shot <laughs> got to return them right after this commercial break <laughs> todd coming in clutch we still got plenty more here we're going to talk about some snacks some game day snacks are, are coming up next i know jan is really excited starving. about this uh she talked to me about this and i said let's do it so we'll, we'll talk about some game day snacks that's coming up next when the teal gate returns
Happy birthday to Queen Ava right here who is sparkling for us to kick off our segment. I wanted to add some sparkle to this segment of the Tealgate Show, Jamal, because it's one of my favorite game day traditions, snacking. <laughs> she loves the snapping. Happy birthday. Thank you for coming in to sparkle for us a little bit as we get ready for this. So we got to talk snacking. Uh, Jana saw this, and she got really excited. So I said, uh, uh, of course we can talk Uncrustables on, on the show. Of course. Why would we not talk Uncrustables? Uh, so these are not completely random. Uh, they actually do relate to the topic at hand of what do NFL players and teams eat. Exactly. So apparently somebody was really interested to find this out. I just hate they beat us to the story. But apparently the number of Uncrustables has increased significantly to the point where somebody went to find how many Uncrustables people are eating. So you can take a look at this still. These are the top 10 NFL teams who eat the most Uncrustables. Now, I don't have my own team, so I didn't make the list. But you will see that our <laughs> Jaguars are number three, consuming 315 plus Uncrustables. I don't know what's going on in Denver. Maybe they don't feed them. If they're consuming that many Uncrustables, but <laughs> I'm a little worried about Denver. I'm like, does your mama cook? Your mama cook? And, and if I'm not mistaken, this is supposed to be per week. Yes. This is per week. Yeah. 315 Uncrustables per week for the Jaguars. So the third most in the NFL. A lot of excitement. Now, Jenna, you told me that you had an Uncrustable story to go along with this. There is a, there is a story. There's something close to Jana's heart with Uncrustables. So we had to do this. Okay. So if the Uncrustables Corporation is watching, I sent you an email. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <laughs> so my challenge with the Uncrustable, it's one of my favorite snacks. It's amazing. However, I am a peanut butter purist. I would like an Uncrustable with just peanut butter. I know you've got peanut butter and honey. You've got peanut butter and jelly. You've got peanut butter and raspberry. I mean, there's probably going to be a banana in there before long. But there is no pure peanut butter Uncrustable. So I sent an email about it a couple of years ago. I think your email ago. got through because I found them. So there you go. Wait, Kyle told me these were the ones that... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to snatch that. That was true. <laughs> is this a real box? This is a real box. I will hold your mic. She did not okay, know that we had so these. So they were trying to get me excited about this before the show, and I was like, no, no, they have honey in them. I've been catfished before. Wait a minute. This red lip is about to be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Only peanut butter. I'm so happy. <laughs> See, every, every so often we have surprises in store. That wasn't a game day bite. Did you guys make this for the show? No, these are real. They're at Is Target Is this from now. the props department? Earl, did you make this box? <laughs> I, I, Earl would have if I'd have, thought, if I'd have told him, but... These are real. They do have, I think your email got through. There is a peanut butter only Uncrustable now. This shows that customer service and persistence pays off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to the Uncrustable family for making this game day snack possible. I'm so happy. I feel like I just won Miss America. I, I think she did just win Miss America. We'll let Jana finish her Uncrustable. We'll take I'm a sorry, quick break and see if, uh, see if she doesn't dive through the whole box the rest of the way. Um, but we'll be right back. <laughs> Deal, Kate. Right after a quick break. Well, it's not a fair without a Ferris wheel. It's not going today, but maybe we can get it going later. Maybe we can get Bond to go climb that. He does tend to try and find some creative shots. Exactly, I know. That looks like something Bond would have, like, moving into the studio so we could use it on the daily, don't you think? I could see him coming up with something for that. It's drizzling a little bit, but that's not going to uh, really stop the vibes here at the Teal Gate. We're getting closer and closer to kickoff. Now, one of the cool things around the Jaguars home games this year, or and this is the second year that they've done this, this yep. Duval Designs program, which gives some local artists a chance to uh, put their spin on a game day poster. Yeah, exactly. So they really wanted to work with a local community of artists and creators to, number one, actually get artists paid for their work. So they are compensated for their work. They are given tickets, and they are also shared on the actual Jaguars website. So to have your art and your work put by an NFL logo is just one way that the Jaguars are continuing to pour into their community. So I got to meet with today's artist earlier. Let's check it out. Jags fans, we are continuing our coverage and collaboration of the Duval Design Project. Now, Justin Mancini is our Artist of the Week, 
and Justin, you have created a true masterpiece for this collaboration. Can you tell me about your medium and your journey as an artist? So, uh, thank you. My, uh, my medium is called Sculpted Relief, and it's actually um, like a plaster base, a, a plaster compound that I uh, put on with um, like palette knives and um, small chisels. And uh, I kind of like, you know, have the design drawn up there and then I go back and um, kind of sculpt it. And then once it dries, um, I'll, I'll kind of uh, use like etching tools to kind of carve out some of the small details. And then um, once it dries completely, I'll go back over it with, with uh, paint. And you do see so much of that detail here. I mean, this is literally like it is coming off the canvas. Obviously this week is recognizing all of the amazing military work and people that we have right here in the community. So how did you tie that into this game versus the Vikings? Um, I was really excited when the Jags creative team um, actually reached out and said that I had the Vikings game because the first thing that I thought about was the white helmets and that it was gonna be um, the Jags first time wearing the white helmets, which is in connection with uh, you know the shell white being in connection with like the military and um, the fact that like um, Devin Lloyd is so connected, has always been so connected with the military. He became our player of focus um, for the design. And so um, like honestly, like the design with like the Viking ship and kind of like the white base with like the black and white details, that was, you know, it kind of popped into my head right away. Absolutely. I have to ask when you look at something like this, that is so three dimensional. What's the most challenging part of creating something like this that also has to translate into a game day poster? Um, humans, humans, because, um, when I do, when I've done this medium before, uh, I do like a lot of like landscapes and, you know, trees and mountains, um, ocean scenes and humans to get the human likeness down, uh, is definitely probably the trickiest part. Well, I think you nailed this and you nailed this entire creation. I'm so glad that you got to be part of the Thank digital so designs initiative. Again, that is the Jaguars initiative, reaching out to the local community of designers, artists and collaborators to create something that is truly unique for every single home game. So if we want to keep up with you, if we want to see even more art from you, where should we follow? Uh, Instagram is the best place. jmancini.artworks. Awesome, Justin. Thank you yeah. so much for spending your time with us. Got a lot. That is fantastic. Jaguars fans so talented. That one was really cool. I really hope Devin Lloyd saw that. Because that, that is an absolutely cool piece of artwork. So you know what? He actually did get to see it because Justin told us that he got a dope on his Instagram when he posted <laughs> it. I mean, and that has to be cool. I know I felt the same way uh, when Emily Ingram said she liked my outfit. You're just like, screenshot, post it, frame it, put it in the hallway. <laughs> but frame it. Where, where can we frame this and frame hang it, it up? On my LinkedIn. Magnet it right on the, uh, right on the fridge. I like that. Yeah, Thanks. we're going to work on that. Newster Jack's uh, maybe swag shop. We'll personalize your memories. <laughs> we'll work on that. All right, we're getting closer to kickoff. That means that the inactives are out, and the Jaguars are going to be without a couple of guys that we kind of maybe saw coming today. Uh, not great, but they are getting a little bit of help back. Take a look. Trevor Lawrence is the name on the list that everybody's focused on. He's not going to dress out today. Neither is Ezra Cleveland. So that means no Ezra Cleveland starting at left guard on the offensive line. No Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. And with no Trevor at quarterback, that means it's Mac Jones's time to Mac shine. Jones. Mac Jones, he's a guy who knows a thing or two about Jacksonville, played high school football at Bowles. Can we roll in the high school highlights again as we bring in the high school guy? We got Justin Barney here. Uh, we're going to wave him in. Justin was there. Justin covered Mac Jones while he was in high school at Bowles. Um, and we've seen Mac, Mac knows a thing or two about scoring some touchdowns in Jacksonville. Justin, uh, you, you've seen it. You've seen him at every step. Yeah. Uh, we've seen, I've seen Alabama and I've seen NFL, but you saw where it started. Saw Mac Jones and Pop Warner as well, but I saw most of his action at Bowles. He was a really good quarterback at Bowles, and people ask, he was really only committed by Kentucky for a little bit of time, and then Alabama came in with a big offer, and people said, man, Mac Jones, why Mac Jones? He was electric on seven on seven, played on an exceptional Bowles team. The thing with Bowles, he was out usually at halftime of games because the lead was so big, but Mac Jones, very good as a high school player throughout his time there, and he was a deceptively good runner, if you can believe that. You look at him now, and you're like, Mac Jones? Mac Jones had some wheels in high school. Don't know if we'll see him running today. But he was a good high school player. Hey, like, high we school. all have those back-in-the-day skills, right? Everybody has them. Look, we were digging through the crates, and there it is, a speed option where they're flipping it to yep. Mac Jones. And I'm like, they're flipping it to Mac Jones? What's going on? Uh, look, Mac's really went through the Hall of Fame of coaches. I mean, yep. from every level. Corky Rogers at Bulls. 
Nick Saban in college, Bill Belichick in the NFL. Now he's here with Doug Peterson. I mean, Mac has had probably, he has got to be up there with the most accomplished list of coaches that he's played for ever. Ever. And I remember talking to his dad, Gordon, when he was in, in high school and he was signing with Alabama. He said, man, he's playing for Porky. Then he's going to go learn. You know, at the time, it was learn from Saban, not play, because he was behind some pretty talented quarterbacks at Alabama. And I talked to his dad after he got drafted. He said he's played for Corky, he's played for Saban, and now he's going to go play for Bill Belichick. So I don't know where Doug Peterson ranks among the he won a coaching Super Bowl. trio. Hey, That's come on. true. That's true. But, yeah, Mac Jones has been uh, blessed to play for the greatest high school, NFL, and college minds ever. Now, Justin, you also mentioned that he tends to fall behind some people with pretty big shoes to fill, an amazing quarterback in his own right. But even if you're good, if somebody is great in front of you and you're always waiting on your moment. So yeah. stepping into this weekend, what do you think are some things he needs to keep in mind going out of the field? I think he's going to treat it like every other situation has been. And he waited in high school. He waited his turn behind upperclassmen in high school, finally got his chance to play, waited his turn to Alabama, behind some guys who attack by Loa, Jalen Hurts, yep. another exceptional uh, duo right there. And so he's had to wait his turn in Jacksonville just a brief amount of time. Jack traded for him in the offseason, but I think he's going to attack it hard. Remember, he's the same draft class as Trevor Lawrence, first round pedigree. So I think Mac's going to approach this, even in his hometown, just like he's always done. He was the guy tasked with trying to replace Tom Brady. So the guy yeah. knows a thing or two about being uh, put under pressure. Now, the one thing that I, and you know Mac maybe a little bit better dating back, Max has his own kind of personality. He's not, he's not the same guy as Trevor Lawrence. Definitely a different guy, brings a different energy out there, has a different relationship with some of the guys. I think that's going to help him. I think so. He, he's, a, he's a quirky guy. He's, he's, he's funny. He talks a lot of trash. He's, a, he's, just a, he's a good dude, a good-natured guy, and a little bit more loose than I think Trevor Lawrence is on the field. Trevor has been so hyped for so long, uh, kind of has things bound to a, a system, and Mac is just so loose. You saw it in training camp, how, ch how chirpy he was, how talkative he was, and how, how people just attracted him. You know, kind of a, it resonated with Mac. I think it's going to help him out today. A little bit of a tough spot that Mac's in for sure, taking over a team that's two and seven, trying to find its way. But uh, look, the guys are excited for Mac. Mac's going maybe, maybe, maybe Mac can be the spark they need. Like you said, sometimes when you're loose, you play better. Like we've all been in those situations where you're just wound tight and you're just not letting the game flow through you. I think you mentioned Mac having that chirp, having a little bit of that trash. Maybe it'll loosen the guys up out there. Yeah. They've got a couple of changes there that they're going to handle, but maybe Mac will be the difference maker. Big audition for Mac as well. I mean, he's on a last year of his rookie deal, a chance, an audition like this. You never know what could happen. It happened for Rob Johnson. Yeah. He had his uh, spot in Jacksonville. He had one good game in Jacksonville. Jack was parlayed that into a first-round pick for Buffalo. They drafted Fred Taylor with that pick. Could be an opportunity for him to open the door for the next stop, or he could just say he wants to stay here in Jacksonville and be a Jaguar. Look, yeah. Mac Jones was excited in the preseason for the opportunity for his parents to see him, to be able to say, hey, I'm at the facility, but mom's coming to pick me up when, when we're right. done here so I, so she can take me home. I, I, I think those are things, these are moments, opportunities that aren't lost on Mac. He seems like a very grounded guy. So I'm sure there's going to be a moment maybe out there on the field where he says, wow, I'm starting for the hometown team. I'm starting yeah. for the Jaguars. But then he'll, he'll go right to work. I, I think it's, I remember asking him after the first preseason game here, and he said he saw a lot of familiar faces, a lot of people in town come to see him today, or came to see him in the Chiefs game, and now he's making his first start. You can better believe that Jacksonville is going to show up and support Mac Jones. Well, I mean, so many different things to look forward to in the game today. I mean, I've seen a variety of fans. Like if you're just going to look over your shoulder, Justin, we've got a Panthers jersey, we've got a Vikings jersey, and a Jags jersey. So people continuing to flow into the stadium, into the show. I know that we're looking forward to a great game day on the field. Jamal, what are you most excited about? Hey, look, uh, the, the Jaguars need a win. I'm excited to see what Mac Jones can do. All right, we're, we're almost out of time. Justin, really quick, I don't know if I can pick the Jaguars this week. Do you think the Jags can get a win? Uh, no. If you've been following my picks all year, they're not, they're not winning. All right. They're not winning today. Well, me and Jan have tried to be a little bit more positive. I, I know I didn't pick the Jaguars to win, but I would love to be proven wrong. Listen, you know me. I'm always going to pick the Jaguars to win, especially after my game day snack. That Uncrustable, <laughs> I am unstoppable is what I will say, and so are my Jaguars. The, the ja and Jana won today. One way or another, Jana won today. She got her all peanut butter Uncrustable. Uh, hey, thanks for hanging out with us here on the Teal Gate. We'll be back here in a couple of weeks for the Jaguars' next home game. We're here every week at the bank for the home game. Come out, see us live, or come just hang out and get all the Teal Gate vibes by hanging out on Monday night for the next episode of Teal, the show 1120, right here on Channel 4. Enjoy game day, guys. See ya.